So the dynamic of this race is changing very rapidly, so much so that it's difficult for me to keep up because we had Pete Buttigieg drop out on Sunday, Amy Klobuchar drop out on Monday, and going into Super Tuesday, now there's a little bit more of a question because it did seem as if, in spite of Joe Biden's huge victory in South Carolina, Bernie Sanders would still sweep. But now, with more candidates out of the race and other candidates absorbing some of that base of support from Amy Klobuchar, Pete Buttigieg, also Tom Steyer, now that he's dropped out, it seems as if individuals who weren't necessarily looking viable in states like California and Texas now are doing a little bit better. There was a poll before anyone dropped out from California that showed that Bernie Sanders was leading with 34% and no other candidate crosses that 15% viability threshold, which is crucial. So even if, let's say, a lot of Pete Buttigieg's supporters go to Bernie Sanders, just the fact that Elizabeth Warren, for example, gets a fraction more, just enough to push her over that viability threshold, she's taking more pledged delegates away from Bernie Sanders, and keeping him from getting a majority with hopes that she can take it from him at the convention. Because as we all know, Bernie is likely going to be the winner of pledged delegates when it's all said and done. He's going to have a plurality. But the goal from other Democrats, namely the establishment, is to keep him from getting to that magic number of 1991. So, you know, with Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar dropping out, I want you to understand what this is. This is an attempt to stop Bernie Sanders. The establishment is quickly coalescing around Joe Biden because they want to stop Bernie Sanders. Because, look, they're not just going to allow all of the candidates as it stands to go into Super Tuesday and get blown out by Bernie Sanders. So this was a last ditch effort to stop him. And of course, from the Daily Beast, there's already more McCarthyist smears against Bernie Sanders that Russia is rooting for Bernie Sanders. So as I predicted, they're pulling out all the stops, but there's one new piece of news that we learned. Pete Buttigieg is endorsing Joe Biden. It hasn't happened yet, not official, but it will happen very soon. But the reason why it's happening, it tells us a lot about the state of the race. So as Justine Coleman of The Hill reports, former President Obama spoke with former presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg after he dropped out of the 2020 race Sunday, the New York Times reported Monday. Obama reportedly did not directly tell Buttigieg to endorse former Vice President Joe Biden, but he did tell the former South Bend, Indiana mayor that he now has leverage and should consider how to use it, a Democratic official familiar with the conversation told The Times. A source confirmed to The Hill on Monday that Buttigieg plans to endorse Biden, who is also set to get the backing of Senator Amy Klobuchar, who will announce the end of her own 2020 White House bid on Monday. Now, as you know, she already dropped out. But, you know, it's interesting because Obama doesn't want to be seen as directly, you know, nudging Pete Buttigieg in that direction. But if you just drop out of the race and you get a call from the former president who has the former vice president currently running, who Obama is very obviously rooting for, Obviously, you know, uh, what Obama wanted Buttigieg to do was to endorse Joe Biden. So that was implicit in that phone call, even if he didn't explicitly say, hey, do me a solid, Buttigieg. Why don't you endorse my buddy Biden for me? That's obvious that, you know, Obama wanted that to happen, right? Nobody can deny that. So what I say to that is, welcome to the primary, Barack Obama, because, you know, there were reports early on that Obama was going to step up and uh, stop Bernie in the event it looked like he was going to run away with the nomination. And we're kind of in that situation currently. But then there were conflicting reports saying that, you know what, Obama will support the nominee no matter what, and he doesn't actually want to get involved in the primary because if he makes an endorsement, that kind of tarnishes his legacy because people who viewed him positively are no longer going to view him that way. He's going to have half the base hate him. So what he's trying to do is pull strings behind the scenes very quietly, maybe nudge people to judge in the correct direction so nobody notices, but we know what's happening. Obama is trying to make sure that everyone in the party coalesces behind Joe Biden. There's a reason why members of Congress are coming out to endorse him all of a sudden. We have Tammy Duckworth endorsing Joe Biden. This is all happening very, very fast because Super Tuesday will have what? 15 states vote, if Bernie Sanders sweeps, then 
once you get that ball rolling, it's like a snowball effect. The momentum just builds and builds and builds to where it's very possible that he does get a majority of pledged delegates and they can't really steal it as easily, right? They can still attempt something. They can try to change the rules before the convention, but stealing it is a lot easier if he only goes into the convention with a plurality, right? Now, it's frustrating because getting a majority is very rare. I think it was John Kerry who's the last person in recent history to actually secure a majority of pledged delegates. So, you know, in order for us to win, we have to overperform. Uh, Joe Biden is saying there's an article that I'm going to talk about in a different video that in the event nobody reaches a majority, he will contest the convention. So they're not going to just allow Bernie Sanders to win. They don't care that a brokered convention is basically going to communicate to voters that the party's in chaos, which helps Trump. They don't care if stealing it from Bernie outright gives it to Donald Trump. This is ultimately about power, right? The Democratic Party establishment, win or lose, you know, to Donald Trump in November, they have to make sure that they remain in power. This is about self-interest. This is about the consultant class remaining in power, still having jobs, and that all ends if Bernie takes over the party, even if Bernie loses to Donald Trump. He takes control of the Democratic Party apparatus. He is the head of the DNC, effectively, once he wins the nomination. So they're going to do whatever they can, and their goal is not to defeat Donald Trump, the goal is to defeat Bernie Sanders. We have to be very clear about that. So if you truly care about beating Donald Trump, if you're a voter and you're a little bit hesitant to back Bernie Sanders, I need you to understand that Bernie's chances against Donald Trump, it's not a guarantee, but he has the strongest chance at defeating Donald Trump. And in the event that nomination is taken from Bernie Sanders, that will destroy the party and almost guarantee a Donald Trump victory, and not just that, a victory for Republicans for decades to come. Because if you have people voting for the first time, millennials, Zoomers, and they see that all the time and effort that they put into getting Bernie elected, you know, phone banking, text banking, canvassing for Bernie Sanders is just undermined like that, it's not going to bode well. So what we all have to do is focus on getting Bernie Sanders a majority. So if you have a friend who supports Elizabeth Warren, if you have a friend who supports Joe Biden, let them know what's at stake. We've got a little over a decade to act on climate change. Four more years of Donald Trump could spell the end of our planet's habitability for us. So there's a lot at stake and we can't risk it. But Democrats... They're so self-interested, so arrogant that they don't care about anything but maintaining the status quo, which means they remain in power, which wouldn't be the case if Bernie's the nominee. So this is all happening. The establishment is quickly coalescing around Joe Biden because that's the only way that they can defeat Bernie Sanders. Now, back in 2016, when everyone was running against Donald Trump and nobody wanted to drop out, there was no figure like Obama to really get everyone else, you know, to to coalesce around uh, Ted Cruz or John Kasich because George W. Bush was delegitimized. He was hated by America, so he had absolutely no credibility or political capital whatsoever. But that's not necessarily the case with Barack Obama. Like it or not, his words have sway. So if he comes out and endorses... Joe Biden, that's going to carry weight. And I don't think he's going to do that yet. But in the event, Bernie still overperforms on Super Tuesday. And it really looks like Bernie's going to get a majority. Don't sit, don't rest, because then we're going to see even more uh, coalescing behind Joe Biden. An Obama endorsement could make a difference. So it's never going to be over until he's the nominee. And that's when we try to take on Donald Trump, which will probably be a more fair fight than the battle that we're dealing with now. We just have to win the nomination. Um, but then we fight like hell to defeat Donald Trump. But I just need you to understand that as more and more people drop out, it's all going to help Joe Biden. It's all part of a concerted effort to beat Bernie Sanders because none of them want Bernie Sanders to win because he is a threat to the establishment and the moneyed interests that prop up the Democratic Party. That's what it is. Beta male.